Okay, so today we're going to be performing a modified knots test uh, for the detection of microfilaria. So the things we need here is we need a centrifuge, we need our 2% uh, uh, formalin, uh, we need our new methylene blue stain, we need a couple transfer pipettes, microscope sliding covers, and then we need our fresh EDTA 1 mil of uh, anticoagulated blood. Uh, and finally, we need our 15 mil uh, centrifuge tube. So we'll go ahead and get started. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our um, formalin and we're going to put it in our centrifuge tube and we're going to fill it to about 10 mils. thing we're going to do is we're going to take our one mil um, of anticoagulator blood and we're going to add it to our test tube here. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to place my lid on to our jar here. And I do want to know anything that's touched the formalin, we want to make sure we properly dispose of afterwards. So formalin is a biohazard. Um, okay, so we're going to take our formalin and our blood and we're going to invert several times. And this just really mixes it together. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to put it in our centrifuge and we're going to centrifuge it for 1000 to 1500 RPM uh, for five minutes. And when you're adding to your centrifuge, you want to make sure you have a balanced tube that has about the same amount of liquid, uh, which this one does. So we'll go ahead and get it going. Okay, we're going to close our centrifuge. I'm going to put it at, I'm going to put it at about 1500 RPM and we're going to set it for five minutes. Okay, so now that our centrifuge is done spinning, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our sample out and take a look at it. So this is what your sample should sort of look like. Um, you'll see the sediment at the bottom. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, get rid of all uh, the supernate on the top. Um, and we're going to just have the remaining bit on the bottom. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get rid of... Let's focus this a little bit better. I'm going to go ahead and properly dispose of this just off camera. And we're going to get rid of the supernate. Okay, so what we're left with here is uh, should look something similar to this. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a single drop of our new methylene blue stain, which I have in a transfer pipette here. We're just going to add one drop. And then taking a clean transfer pipette, we're going to gently mix. Get it off the side there a little bit. Okay. So we're going to do this a few times and this just basically mix, mixes it here. And once we've done this a few times, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a single drop of this and we're going to put it onto a slide. So we're going to take our microscope slide and we're going to take a single drop and we're going to place it on here. Okay. We're going to take our microscope cover slip. And we're just going to set it on top just like so. Okay, so your cover should, slip should look something like that. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to move over to the microscope and we're going to read this under the microscope. Okay, so now that we have our um, modified knots 
slide um, already to read underneath the microscope, we'll go ahead and do that. So the first thing you want to do is make sure that you are on the lowest power magnification, which is four. We're going to turn on our microscope and we're going to go ahead and we're going to take our slide. We're going to make sure our slide is enabled with our patient name and date. Okay, we're going to go ahead and take a look. Okay. Okay, so um, the ideal magnification for finding uh, derefilaria is going to be on the 10 uh, scanning power. So um, when you do uh, find one, you're going to find it uh, stationary and fixed onto the slide, unlike the direct smear. So in a direct smear, you're going to see it moving and kind of dancing around. Um, on the uh, modified knots test, you're going to see it as a fixed um, solution. Excuse me, a fixed, um, a fixed object, um, and it won't be moving. So okay, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to move it up to the ten. And just like with any cytology, uh, you want to read it in kind of a systematic order. So I like to go um, in a nice zigzag pattern, um, just going across the entire slide. So I kind of go reading like that. Um, so I just start at the very top left corner. I go all the way down the slide, and then I go slightly over, and then I go all the way back up, and then slightly over and all the way back down. Um, that way we cover the entire slide, and we make sure that we don't go over anything that we've already gone over. Okay, go ahead and start scanning. So the, one of the first things you're going to see uh, very, very obviously is you're going to see a lot of blood, um, red blood cells. So not, not surprising at all considering this is um, a fixed, um, essentially sample of whole blood. So you're, you're going to see tons of red blood cells. You do see some air bubbles in here. So we'll move over slightly and then we will go back up the microscope slide. Okay, we're going to move over and we're going to go back down our slide again here. I do see a handful of air bubbles, but just tons and tons and tons of red blood cells. Okay, we're going to move over again. We're going to go back down. Okay, we're approaching the last line of our slide here, so we're going to keep our eye out. Unfortunately, in, um, in the state that I live in, I live in Washington State, um, we have little to no, no heartworm disease in our area. Um, however, we, we are starting to see very rare cases in the state. So always uh, something to be really familiar with, um, especially if I were ever to move to the South. Um, this is something that you would really, a really valuable skill to have. Um, not only differentiating uh, two different types of microfilaria, but also the different types of um, diagnostic tests that you would do uh, for identification. Okay, uh, so we've looked at our entire slide. Um, fortunately for this dog, uh, we did not see any signs of microfilaria, which is great. Um, the last thing we're going to do is we're going to clean off our microscope here. So uh, we're going to go ahead and put it back to the lowest power objective. We're going to take our slide off and we're going to just make sure that we clean our slide. Um, we're using an optical lens cleaner. Okay, we just want to discard our slide and then uh, just make sure your microscope is ready for the next person. Okay, so today we're going to discuss the two different kinds of microfilaria that you would possibly see on this type of test. So uh, there's two main microfilaria. One is very, very concerning. So the, uh, the dipo or zero filaria is uh, the heartworm, common heartworm uh, disease in dots. The other one, uh, diplotinoma recondinum, um, is not nearly as concerning. In fact, there's usually no treatment recommended uh, for this type of uh, parasite. They actually do not actually consider it a pathogen. Um, so no real uh, effort is made to uh, treat it or prevent it just because there's no known um, issues caused by it. So um, while heartworm disease is very, very serious in dogs, um, the other one is not. However, the reason we need to know the difference is because they actually appear very similar on uh, cytology. So 
Okay, I'll just go ahead and show you the difference here. And we'll kind of discuss how to differentiate between these two. So go ahead and get started. So this over here is Dirofilaria. So this is our common heartworm disease um, parasite. So there's a couple notable differences in these, these two. So um, although they look very similar, um, we actually have a number of differences that we can help us uh, distinguish between um, which one's which. So uh, the Dirofilaria, uh, this one usually occurs in larger numbers. Um, so these guys usually occur in smaller numbers um, on, on a slide. So um, usually the Dirofilaria, if you're doing a modified, snot, modified knots test, um, this is gonna actually uh, not be moving uh, versus like if you were to do a direct smear, you would see him dancing around. This one, you would see him basically planted on your slide um, and he would not be moving. He, she. Um, these guys actually do still uh, tend to move. So that can be a one giveaway. Um, the Dirofilaria uh, tends to have a tapered head versus the blunted head for this guy. So you can kind of see this, uh, this thing has a little blunt head. This one kind of has a little taper. So this is its tail down here. This is its head up here. Um, this one actually, uh, the Dirofilaria tends to be thicker and darker. So you can actually sort of see on the Diplotinata, um, Diplotinata, I can never say that one, you can actually see uh, some of the inner membrane um, uh, microscopically. Um, so it's a little more, I guess, transparent looking than the Dirofilaria. The Dirofilaria tends to be just thicker and it tends to um, hold that stain a little bit better. Um, so also uh, their tails are slightly different as well. So our Dirofilaria um, has a straight tail um, and then our Diplotonema um, has a kind of a button hooked tail. Um, so there are a couple main differences, but like I said, it's very important to know the difference um, just because one is a very serious disease, the other one is not um, considered a serious disease. Um, so very important to know the difference between both these two.